from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. If there's ever a person who really doesn't need an introduction, as the cliche goes, it is Carla Hall. And so I just want to say something sort of personal. I, you know, we all know Carla from her cookbooks, from Top Chef, uh, from The Chew, of course. But there's something about Carla that goes beyond all of that. And I, I was thinking about this as I was, you know, getting nervous about standing up here and trying to introduce Carla. I was like, you know, there's a reason that people love Carla. And it's because what you see is what you get. I mean, that's it. It's like... TV, people can have characters and exaggerations, but Carla in her home is the same as Carla on TV. When she says she cooks with love, she does. When she says that she answers everyone's emails, even the people that criticize her and answer every tweet, she does. Because she has integrity. And she has it by the bowlful. And I consider her a friend, and she is, uh, I think she is, sets an example for many of us who know her. So it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Carla Hall. Gosh, that was nice. Oh, I'm sorry, where's my cake? I, you know, the thing about working in food is everybody gives you food, and somebody just gave me some chocolate cake, and they're like, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I got invited to Tim's house. I, I, it took a couple emails and some verbal requests, and um, so uh, I said, do you want me to bring some potato salad over? And he sends a note back, yes, exclamation, yes, exclamation. So, um, so he's vested in me cooking with love. So, yeah. Um, so it is so great to be here. It is so great to um, see that people still do read books. You know, they, the way that we're, they're treating the publishing companies, you would think that people don't read books, but we do. And, um, and cookbooks. And who needs a recipe on a nook? I mean, the only reason you should have the recipe on a nook is to go grocery shopping or something, right? You need to make notes. So um, what I decided to do, I had this little bag with questions in it, and I'm going to interview myself, and I'm going to randomly pull out, how cool is that? <laughs> you know, I, I know, you guys should try it. I had this great idea, and I'm like, oh my God, this is the first time I've ever done it, by the way, so we'll see how it works out and if I'll do it again. But I'm like, how cool would it be for me to just put all the questions in that people usually ask me? And I'm going to put them in here. And, uh, and somebody, I had somebody else do it, by the way. So it's not like I put in things that I wanted to tell you about, like my hair. <laughs> Although, you know, my hair is, they, we talk about Daphne's hair being the sixth character on the chew, but mine has to be the seventh. Um, all right, so here are my questions. And then um, some of the things on these cards will actually um, have me reading an excerpt from uh, my cookbook. <laughs> yeah. I am so proud of this book. I'm so excited about it, and I, I'm so proud of it. And anyway, uh, all of that. Okay, so I really should have somebody choose one. You're using your hands, but I could have you choose one. <laughs> but I think they can see you pick this. They'll see you busy. Okay, okay, I'll give, okay. <laughs> I've never had anybody this close, but they're kind of busy. <laughs> All right, so what's the next most exciting project you have in the works? And then I need to preface that you can talk about. Um, so as soon as I finished this book, um, the same way that when I finished Cooking with Love, um, I had this idea that, that was just bubbling up and that came out of me, and it was this book. And the next book that I want to do is actually a dessert cookbook, because I think a lot of you all relate to me with desserts. And, um, and then I figured I could also, because I have shameless promotion um, for the chew, and I'm always cooking desserts on the chew, so I'm like, huh, 
I should probably just do a dessert cookbook and the same way that I've done this one and breaking down um, different ideas and, and um, cuisines in this book, I want to do the same thing with desserts. So break them down. And um, Lisa Yockelson did a book similar, Baking, Baking, the Flavor, Baking by Flavor, um, similar to that, where you can like take your cake and then you can do ice. If anybody has notes and you want to start this, because I haven't started, I'm going to give you the idea right here. But um, perhaps I shouldn't give you so much detail. But, um, you know, a cake, a filling, an, a frosting, and the pie the same way. So you can create your own thing. Because I think some of the power in actually cooking is to give you the power to create things yourself. I don't want you to follow my recipes like um, they are the, the Bible. I, I don't really want you to follow that either without really thinking about it. But I... I um, but still, I mean, you know what I mean. I want you to create something that you have, you will take ownership for. All right, next question. You still busy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to pick one. All right. Okay, the funniest thing um, that has ever happened to you during a taping. You guys know what that is, right? You remember the booty fall? When, um, so I think I had these very shoes on. As a matter of fact, I did. Okay, so here are these shoes. So, oh, all right. All right, so here are these shoes. And uh, my mother would not have liked that at all. Um, so I had these little sandals on that don't have a heel. And I was sitting in a stool similar to this, and I wanted to hook my heel which I usually wear on the stool. So instead of hooking my heel on the stool and the rung on the chair, I was pushing it back. So somehow, and you know where this is going. So here I am, you know, getting ready to sit down and I'm pushing the stool back, but I sit down. And before I could real, I realize I'm falling and I just went down like in a heat, like boom. But they decided to, re well, Clinton was like, oh, my gosh, and tries to reach out to me to help me. And then Mario just said, forget it. Clinton's closer. I'm just going to take my time and just laugh right now. <laughs> um, Michael didn't know what was going on. And <laughs> Daphne is just like, you know. So then they decided to play this in slow motion. And this is what it looked like. The great thing about that, when people think that I am um, over the top, that um, I mug for the camera, I was just really happy that in a, a situation where I was truly falling, my faces looked the same. <laughs> you know, and what Tim said is, I am authentic. I do that. I make faces. People are like, why do you make faces? Because it's me, and I make faces. That's what I've been doing. I mean, I was that kid, that goofy kid who would look in the mirror like, like, you know, this, I wanted to teach myself to raise it up on the other side, too. I, I did that, I mean, for, you know, forever. I, I was a theater kid. What can I say? I was weird, goofy. All right, next question. I won't even ask you anymore. Okay. See, it's all about the, all about that subliminal message. I knew she'd cave. Um, how has the life changed your show? I mean, changed. How has your life changed since the show? Um, let me break that one down. So, home life. So now I have um, an apartment in New York, and I live here. A lot of people don't realize that I do live in D.C. Um, I know. I live, um, my husband says, quit telling people exactly where you live. I'm like, yeah, I do live here. And I'm like giving them the street address and everything. Um, I, I'm just kind of excited about living here. As a matter of yesterday, just yesterday, and I was telling this story, I, um, I had this fitness band. Darn, I keep forgetting to put the fitness band on. All those steps that I've taken here aren't even going to count. Okay. So I had this fitness band, and um, we were out walking yesterday. And I guess somebody, well, let me back up. So when we were going out for this walk, I put on lipstick because I, I don't know why. 
I, I just was leaving, and there was a lipstick there, and I put some on. And so um, my husband said, why are you putting on lipstick? I'm like, I don't know. It was kind of weird, wasn't it? I'm going out for this walk, like I'm going for the hike in Rock Creek Park. So um, <laughs> so we, here we are walking down Aspen, and this lady stops, and she says, um, Carla, do you need a ride? <laughs> and I said, no, we're out for a walk. <laughs> And I turned to my, she goes on, I turned to my husband, I said, it was the lipstick, wasn't it? <laughs> if I didn't have that lipstick on, she would have thought that I was just out for a walk, but it looked like I was going somewhere. <laughs> so, um, okay, so that's changed. So I have this apartment in New York, and I, and I live here. And um, so my husband and I split time every other weekend in a perfect world. He goes up, and then in a perfect world, I come here. So neither of us is traveling every weekend. Um, personally, it has been, um, it's been, it's been amazing. I mean, just to get to know this group of people on the Chew and, um, and just watch, honestly, my growth as a person and, um, challenging. I have this, um, thing about just learning something new. You guys know I'll do all these challenges on the Chew. They're like, oh, you know, if it's a challenge and it seems scary, I'll just go ask Carla. She'll do it. Um, so that has changed. And um, I think in terms of my brand and who I am and loving to teach, I get to teach and share on a much larger platform than I would have ever imagined, ever, ever, ever. And one of the things that I love to do is teach, and I love to watch people get something and, and their minds start churning and making it their own. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm inspired by you all, and so I thank you for that. Okay. So the next question. You want to jump in? <laughs> Did I have a love for cooking as a child? No. Okay, next question. Um, I, I really didn't. I love to eat. I did, I did not want to cook. I, um, I had to cook when I was 12 because um, Girl Scouts, we were earning a badge, and um, I, you know, would do anything for a badge. Uh, well, not anything. Yeah. Um, I love to eat. I was all about um, going outside and playing until the dinner bell rang or my mom, you know, put half her body out the window to call me back in because dinner was ready. And um, so, yeah, no. Everybody imagines that all of these chefs cooked as kids, and uh, I was very much like the youth are today. They don't cook. They don't know how to do anything. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> there are some of you, and you're here. <laughs> but there are a lot of people, honestly, they grow up, they don't know how to cook. We, we've taken home ec out of the classroom. So, you know, how, can we just get that back? Is there anybody here? I know. We need home ec back in the classrooms. They've taken home ec out. They've taken art out. They've taken anything that makes us human, and they've left. I mean, I, I, God bless all the STEM courses, but dang. We'll be little robots. I, robot. They made a movie out of that. Um, you actually pulled two questions, so I'm going to read the next one. Um, what's your favorite ingredient? That's easy. Who knows my favorite ingredient? Who, who, did somebody say a hootie? Did you say a hootie? <laughs> um, lemons. I love a good pucker. I love lemons. I love tart. I love um, sour pickles. I love lemons. I love vinegar. I just love acid. It's not good for my teeth, but I love it. Um, my favorite. And as a matter of speaking of which, if you get my cookbook, um, you will notice that anything that can have lemons do. And um, so if you don't like lemons, you probably shouldn't get this book. Um, but you could change it to something like lime. Um, um, the, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, love a good pucker. Um, if you have a recipe, and just as for those of you who are lemon lovers, if you have a recipe and it calls for lemon, I mean, lemons are expensive. Remember, like, a few months ago, and it was like either send your kids to college or get a bag of lemons or limes? Um, 
you know, use the use the rind. Put that in there because you're going to add more flavor. All I mean, even if it does the recipe doesn't call for it because you're already paid for it. So you may as well use it, right? So, right? I know. And here's something else for you. Um, lemon oil. This is one of my favorite, favorite things. I, I did this, um, I think maybe I'd done it in Top Chef or something. But you take a whole lemon. I'm giving you a recipe, so if you have a pen. I'm not going to repeat it. Um, a whole lemon, a cup of olive oil or canola, depending on what you're using it for, a little pinch of salt. Put all of that in a blender. Everything. Yes, everything. Just cut up the lemon. Don't even worry about that little stem, but take that out, okay? Don't worry about the seeds. Um, and then you whiz it up, and then you strain it, and then you have this beautiful lemon oil, which you can keep in the refrigerator. It is good in pancakes. It's good in fish. It's good on chicken. It's good just drizzled in a salad. It is the simplest thing, and basically you're making a vinaigrette. It's that simple. Did you guys get it? All right, great, which means, okay, by definition, you can also do that with oranges. Um, if you try to do it with lime, they're a little bitter, so with the pith, so you have to do, it, do a little more work. So, yeah, I'm going to do it with that. All right. Um, and we, I'm good with time? Good. I'm going to ask another. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pick one here. I'm going to pick read an excerpt out of the, your book. Where is it? <laughs> I know. Nobody picked that one. I don't know where that was. Okay, so I'm going to read an excerpt. Um, all right. My brother-in-law, Gus, is the first person who made this dish for me. And this is the Callaloo crab and coconut spinach stew. And I really, really wanted to like it. <laughs> he used palm oil, and that's definitely an acquired taste, as is the uh, traditional funky, dried salt fish he threw in there. This is a dish that hails from my heritage, so I wanted to create my own take on it. I played around with the essential ingredients until I got to this version, which I loved. It has five U's here, so <laughs> loved. Um, the savory bacon and crab add a real depth of flavor, and the okra and coconut milk give the stew body. When I took my first bite, I screamed, literally. It just hit me with its soulfulness, soulfulness and super, super tastiness. I hope you'll love it as much as I do. This, um, this soup, when I made it, and I refined it a little bit, and um, the, my recipe tester and co-author Genevieve Toe and I, um, so we, we would plate everything and we would take a picture so that when we did the um, photographs for the book, there would be some reference to whoever the um, food stylist was. And we took a bite, and we paused, and we looked at each other, and we were like, <laughs> good. I mean, you know, it's something, you ever, you guys ever make something that makes you just want to toot your own horn? Right? Toot, toot, honk, honk, ah, ooh, gah. What does that look like in sign language? Okay, let me see. Toot, toot. Honk, honk. Ah, ooh, gah. That was pretty exciting. I like that. I like that. Um, because my thing is, if you're going to serve somebody something, uh, if you don't like it, trust me, they're not going to like it. So I don't understand people who make food, and you're just like, well, did you taste it? And they're like, no. Well, dang, I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> you know, lie. Lie to me and tell me that you tasted it. But anyway, all right. So I did this recipe. I loved it. And so I, I had an event, and uh, no, I was, I was doing this, uh, the soup, and I gave it to Gus. And I said, Gus, you know, um, this is, uh, the inspiration was from you because you made it for me. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never made a callaloo in my life. And I'm like, no, I put that in the book because you did. You gave me this. And I'm like, are you telling me that I've lied? This, is, this whole story is a lie. And then I think I mixed up the name. He calls it fish stew. Same thing. Callaloo fish stew, um, but it was funny because he was trying to deny the fact that he had anything to do with this, um, but it is delicious. So those of you who have the book, it is yummy, yummy, yummy. All right. I'm oh, he loved it. He loved it. We didn't like his. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, when I wrote my first book, Cookbook, and the inspiration for Carla's Comfort Foods was really to, um, it was a journal. It was basically a journal, and it was about um, telling this story from when I first started to cook and Sunday suppers at my grandmother's, well, Sunday suppers at my grandmother's house, then starting to cook, and then my catering years, and then on to the chew. And um, so, but also, there was nobody in my family who was really interested in cooking other than me. So if I stopped cooking, then all of the recipes, or at least the food memories that I had, were going to die. So when I had this book, and, I, and we've had a couple of sketchy um, family holiday meals. I mean, like the time that my sister said, um, oh, we'll cook, but let's have it at your house. You know, let's have, let's have Christmas dinner at your house. I'm like, okay. She said, I want vegetables. I'm like, great. We just, you know, have some, you will have vegetables. You bring the vegetables. So I had been working at the Washington Club um, on Christmas Eve. And so we had um, all of this food, and, and I was exhausted. But I said, you can have dinner at my house, but I'm not cooking. I thought that was pretty clear. Maybe she was thinking, why would we have it at your house if you're not cooking? But I didn't really think past that. I, so she comes to my house on Christmas Day with a Safeway bag of vegetables. Um, where's the rest of the food, I say to her. Well, what do you mean? Isn't, didn't you cook? No, I told you I wasn't going to cook. Everybody is standing around. We have no food. It's Christmas morning, I mean, Christmas lunch, and we have no food. So I went back to the Washington Club, raided the fridge, got the leftovers, and that was our Christmas dinner. You know, or the time that it was at her house, and I'm going around the buffet after the prayer and everything. I'm going around the, the buffet, and I'm like, where's the, the, dress, the um, gravy? She's like, oh, girl, I forgot to make it. Gravy is a staple. <laughs> you really don't need the turkey, but you need the gravy. <laughs> a am I right? I know, right? So being the cook that I am, I put my plate down, and I made some darn gravy from some little scratchy, scratchy things that she had in the house. I'm like, who does this? Okay, so back to my cookbook. So when the cookbook, had, the cookbook had come out, and I was doing, uh, I was on GMA, and I was promoting the cookbook, and, and the idea came to me right there with Lara. And I said, oh, if my family is listening, I just want you to know, Mama, you're doing page 77. Kim, you're 101. <laughs> Gus, you're, paid, you're doing the turkey. And I gave them all um, recipes to do in the book. It was the best Thanksgiving dinner ever. Yeah, so you guys, you don't have to be controlling, but sometimes you may have to give a recipe or two. All right? All right. Uh, we're still good? Is it time for Okay, we're okay, good. We're still good. Okay, good. Okay. Um, what was the worst mistake you ever made in the kitchen? People always want to know this kind of thing because they want to know your failures. You know, that's why, that's why those shows, those, you know, they're very popular, those reality shows, because, you know, they, people like seeing people fall on their face. Um, but it is funny, right? Okay, so the wor worst mistake I ever made was um, when I served um, undante chicken to um, some people, like about 100 of them. Uh, I was catering. Is anybody here that was at that dinner? <laughs> okay, good, good, very good, very good. Um, I was catering. I was trying to figure it out, and, um, you know, I learned from my mistakes. It's all about experience. And um, I roasted this chicken, and um, then they brought it back. It was family style. They brought it back in the kitchen and said, um, Carla, it's, it's a little red. I mean, it was really red. They were kind of nice. And so that was the biggest thing. There's really not much recovery there. No, no. So, yeah, we, we moved past that. It still bugs me, but we moved past it. Um, I get this one a lot. Um, how do you remain so fit being that you're around food all day? Is anybody thinking about that question? You're like, yeah. Um, jeans. I'm six feet tall. Um, I've never, I, I have to say that uh, before the chew, honestly, before the chew, I never thought about my weight. I never thought, I mean, because I, 
I have a high metabolic rate. I, I'm one of those people that you don't want to be sleeping next to at 2 in, in the morning, and I'm hot. I'm a furnace because my body's still burning up some energy. Um, but then the chew started, and um, we were eating, like, probably 10, sampling 10 dishes a day, so five for each show. And I gained 20 pounds in three months. I know. <laughs> Secretly, I wanted the show to be canceled. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know if I can handle this, you know, because, but um, I got, but then, so I started to learn how to taste. But um, for me, it's all about moderation, and I, and I talk about that. I have this cookie company where we make tiny cookies the size of sugar cubes, and you have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and that's how I eat. But, but really, y'all, I wasn't in the breast line. I was in the high metabolic rate line. <laughs> yeah, that was a little personal. I can't even believe I said that. <laughs> Let me just have some cake. Uh, my mom says your mouth is going to get into you into trouble one day. Mm. All right. So it's almost time, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up to you guys, whatever questions you may have. There are mics here, and you guys can come up and ask me whatever question. Don't make it too personal because you can see I'm kind of closed. And you can form a line so that, you know, they just go kind of quickly. Hi, Carla. Hi. Yeah, uh, my question is, you said you didn't love cooking when you were a kid. When did this uh, love take hold of you? At what age? Um, great question. Um, I went to culinary school at 30. I kind of fell into food. I, um, I, I was an accountant, so I started, uh, my career started in accountancy. I worked for Price Waterhouse. I got my CPA, and then all of a sudden, I was afraid of hating my job at 40, and I I was immobilized with that fear. So, um, I went to Paris, and I start. I was modeling in Paris, and it was in it was in Paris that I was hanging out in kitchens, and I was like, oh, this is what happens in the kitchen before the food is done. You know, I had no idea. And um, so these girls were making all of these recipes, and they were going back and forth. Oh, well, this is what my mother did. This is what my mother did. And I had no idea. I had no idea. So I was fascinated, and I started buying cookbooks, a lot like a lot of you all here. I started buying cookbooks, and so they were my teacher. And, um, and I did that for a while, and then I started a lunch delivery service as a fluke. And I just love – I think it was the cooking process of what I loved was – people enjoying the food. I mean, this is how I nurture people. This is how I give my love to people. And I, I love that, even if it was negative, because I learned something about it. And then I went to culinary school at 30. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. You can see which line I got in. Oh, <laughs> the breast line. I know. Yeah. You were on that mm -hmm. side of the room. I was on I know. I was the over room. there. Nobody's <laughs> over there. I got three people over here. Yeah. See? So let's see which line is more popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got it and say, oh, you're so me. tall. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, I'm married to one of the guys that's like you, so he can eat a dozen. See, that's what I'm saying. Well, hold on. That's what I'm saying. He went for that line. He didn't go over here. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> that's all right. Go ahead. He's one of those guys he can eat a dozen donuts and not gain weight. If I'm in the room with a donut, my butt's bigger. He likes that butt. He does. Well, I'm one of those unfortunate people who's allergic to shellfish and uh -huh. mollusks, mm -hmm. and I love that kind of thing. And you were talking about the soup that you're, the stew, the fish stew. Yes, yes. I can't eat shrimp. So right. what can I use as, a, as something comparable so I can still get the flavors without the death? But I think... <laughs> uh, I, I think that um, the bacon, and those of oh, you who... I love bacon. Right? And oh. those of you who don't um, oh. eat pork, you can do a beef bacon. And I think the, um, and this really the sweetness of the shellfish. So you really want, um, even in that soup, you might be able to do um, like a white sweet potato because it's that's that sweetness that you want, um, even though there's it's not in there. But um, so the white sweet potato and maybe, um, and then the bacon, which is already in there. I think you'd like it. I'm not going to make it, but Laura, you're, you're going to make it. Laura, are you taking notes? <laughs> All right, great. You're welcome. Hi. 
Yeah, you were in that line too. I was. Proud, I'm sorry. I'm proud so sorry. To be in that line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm not a cook, mm -hmm. but I really admire the creativity around it. How do I? How do I? I I'm not good at it at anything. I don't boil eggs. I don't do anything. They how took home start? ec before you started school, didn't they? I actually did take home ec. Oh dang. <laughs> So I'm not I'm a really sorry. great uh, yeah. advertiser. Yeah, it wasn't your interest. That. Okay, yeah, uh huh. But I would really like. I love it all, and I'd like mm -hmm. to become good at it. How do I start? Um, I mean, I think that's a really good question because a lot of people. Uh, first of all, I think when when people aren't good at something, they they don't do it because we don't want to fail. And I think that you should throw that out the window because unless you are willing to fail at something you're not going to get good. So, and you have to eat. Um, I love you. Right, you, girl, you know she has to eat. Um, so <laughs> what I would say is start with really simple recipes. Like in my cookbook, I have roasted green beans. And so you take the green beans and you toss them in um, olive oil and you have some cloves of garlic and some sprigs of thyme. And you put them on a sheet pan and you put it into an oven like at 425 degrees, hot and fast. So... And then they're in there for a little bit, and then they come out and they're done. A little color. You can do that. Please, please, if you can't do that, just stand here right now and just say, hi. What's your name? Hi, I'm Karen, and I can't put a green bean on a sheet pan. Uh, right, but you, I'll text you tomorrow and let you know how yeah, it goes. <laughs> right? So you can do that part. There's also a recipe in here um, with salmon. And even, even if you don't eat salmon, you could do it with the chicken. And I take um, salmon, center cut salmon fillets, and I mix mayo and, mu and Dijon mustard and tarragon. And I salt the, the fish, and I put that on top, and I put it under the broiler, and it's in there for about eight minutes. Okay. I might try that so that's that's it's right there. You just made a meal, a meal. and you can yeah. be eaten in 15 minutes. And so I think it's what you do is you start with something simple, and then you get your sea legs, so to speak, mm -hmm. and and just figure out things that you can make. But I think that the real thing is when when you're at home and you're cooking. I, I know I have the questions. Uh, you have to have the food there because what happens is you ma it makes it too easy. You're at home, you're hungry, you don't you say you can't cook, you go out to eat. So you never put yourself in the position of success. All right. So yeah. Thank you, Karen. Thank you you want to write a cookbook, girl? I, birth and a baby. That's all I'm saying. Is birth and a baby. I think it's your ideas. And so what a cookbook is, it's not just the recipes, but it's the stories. And so all of those stories that you have, um, you you put those together. It's Beth great. I've got a cooking blog. Four years old. Lots of stories. Lots Dude. of recipes. How do I get the next step? So I was fortunate enough to have a publisher. So Simon & Schuster was my publisher. Um, I had um, a literary agent, so I went there. So I think that because you have a blog, you already have um, kind of a... Uh, SaucyCuisine.com. Uh, All man. about sauces. No, but so you already have a proven um, track record. I would say right. just go to a literary agent and see if they will accept you, and they will help step you through that process. Because they, they're How the I ones find who... find one, a literary, a literary agent? Literary. Somebody pointed me to one. I I don't know. I had people. Literary, literary Marketplace. Literary Marketplace. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I'm taking notes. Yeah. No, good luck. Because you are you are way ahead of the game than I was. I was bubbling through. As a matter of fact, when I, when I wrote the proposal and um, I called the literary agent, she called me and she said, what is this shit? <laughs> I could quote, unquote. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, my God. And, and it was because uh, my, my being and myself weren't, they weren't in the words, and I thought somebody else could do it. And you can't do a book without being in it. And so I had to rewrite it. And um, so now Genevieve and I are just like this. But, but yeah, you got okay. is that, is that Thank help? you very You're much. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Hi. Oh, oh. Hi. I thought you was going to go. Hi, I'm Carla, too. So. Hey, Carla. Hey, let us see. HU, Howard University. Bye, That's Sam. right. That's right. Hey. Okay. My family, we all cook. And I'm thinking after I do my second retirement, I would like to, I guess, get a little more professional. Um, what would you recommend? I don't know if I really want to do a whole culinary right. school thing. And but it's expensive, and you just yeah, retired right, again right, twice. Right. And I don't want to do yeah. all that. 
but what would you recommend to? I would suggest that you go to recreational cooking schools mm -hmm. and not necessarily, well, you can do two things. You can go to recreational cooking schools and volunteer because the, the volunteers get just as much experience mm -hmm. as the people who are taking the class because they're there and they're right. standing around and you get to actually work and with the, the guest teachers and yes. there are a lot of people who come through there. Okay. So, and it's free, you okay. know, you know. And there's a shelter downtown, um, I think MK. I think I was thinking about going there because they uh, have Martha's the Kitchen? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a great way because you're, you're going to learn by doing, and you're right. going to learn a lot. And okay. D.C. Central Kitchen is another great place, too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So congratulations. This is my grandbaby. Hey, grandbaby. What's up, girl? And she cooks. You yes. cook? I'm I, yeah. She's been cooking for a long time. You're our future. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask you a question. What's your aspiration in life? Who who let her in here? <laughs> Baby. I'm fifty years old. And so I'm fifty. So if I uh, Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It doesn't crack. Um I um I wanted to major in theater. I wanted to, I know you can't tell. I wanted to do theater, and so um, that was my aspiration for a long time. I was a creative sort. I drew, I was in theater, um, and so I was used to just, just being happy in whatever I did, and then um, real, real life took place. But I would say my aspiration, follow your heart, and um, sometimes that changes, and you don't know what that is, but if you have a desire or a pull to do something, listen. And I think if you learn that now and don't care about fail, failing, don't care about breaking an arm or anything like that, girl, you get on the high bars. And if you fall, you're going to break an arm, but you're going to learn something on the way down and afterwards with that cast on. And I, I don't mean to be funny, but it's true. And so I think that you should always think whatever you have the, the idea in your head to do, you do it and you make a way because the universe will conspire to help you make that happen. And don't sacrifice. Don't let anybody tell you no. There is power in the yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, do we have time for? Okay, we have five minutes. Hi. Okay. Um, so I'm a picky eater, but I love food, and I like trying new stuff. So do you have any ideas? Um, yeah. So really, the thing is, you have to make your own food, because you're picky. Um, I mean, you know, uh, don't be picky and ask me to make something for you. I mean, right? Dude, <laughs> and and why are you picky? Why aren't you trying new things? You, what what happened? Well, I am trying new things. I like trying things. But what happened before? Well, from day one. <laughs> from day one. <laughs> so, mama, mama, get up here. Get up here, mama. Mama. All right. So, mama. From day one. From day one, she was picky. But what yes. happened when she was picky? What did you do? Did, did she will try any and everything? How many times? Every time, and hates everything. So what happened? When she hated it, what happened? Did you take it off the table? Did you say? I tried to sneak it in there. I tried to, you know, mix You tried the to sneak them. I tried to sneak them. Didn't work. But I'm saying, but she, she took your power away because what she said, I hate it, and then you became the sneaky mom. So you're like, dude, you got to eat. She has to eat, but she, what she has learned, I'm sorry I'm talking about you like you're not here. What she learned was that if she says no, there's going to be another alternative. And so I think that, you know, honestly, when somebody doesn't like something, you just have to keep giving it to them because they. Yes. Kept giving it to her. Kept giving it to her. What don't you like? But now, let, me, let me just tell you this. One time I met this kid and the kid said, I don't like, I, I don't like um, zucchini. And so he came up to me and, and I, was, I was at this grocery store doing um, some grilling, grilling some zucchini. And the, the mother said, oh, my God, he's eating the zucchini. And he never liked, he didn't like zucchini. And I'm like, well, how are you making it? And she said, well, I just throw it in some water that's boiling. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. no. no. I said, okay. Now, are you a good cook? Am I a good cook? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, she's an excellent cook. I cook for our family reunion. Oh, you are Everything. the bomb cook. Okay. Everything. So it's really, I had to just go there. But, okay, so it's you. But you're trying new things now. 
No, you're trying new things. That's awesome. No, but mom, you have you're the bomb. I have to like, you know, if I was a therapist, I'd have to see where I am now. Okay. So I think when you're trying new things, figure out what you like and then then build flavors onto that. Like if you like green beans, and especially in this book, it gives you 18 different cuisines in the spice chart. And then this way you can try and introduce things and see how you like them. Because I think that's the thing. Start with what you love and then go from there. Yeah, she's you, starting to cook for herself now. Ah! Thank God. Yay, you said thank God. <laughs> Okay, back over here. Hi, Carla. This has been fantastic. I think I stood in the wrong line as well. And, and crack doesn't. It doesn't crack. It doesn't crack. Yes. What's She's your favorite? She's 80 years old, y'all. I'm 57. You're 57? 57. Dude. Okay. So what's your favorite recipe? Um, gosh, you know, um, the thing that I go to, um, when I'm homesick in New York, I'm always making a pot of greens and cornbread. It's so okay. simple. I mean, because I'm from the South, and, and that that – cures the homesickness. But my recipes change. They change uh, according to the season because in the, in the winter, I'm so tired of stews and I want something fresh and light. And so by the time the spring comes, I start making salads. And then I'm like, I'm tired of cold food. Then I want to go back to stews and something comforting. So the same way that, um, at least in this area, we go through the seasons, fall, winter, spring, um, fall, winter, spring, winter, spring summer. summer, summer, the four. You don't know. Uh, I mean, my body goes through the same changes. So um, I think one of my favorite summer recipes, I, I, a hamburger with some lemonade. And, you know, and then in the winter, I love, I love stews, any stew. The, my, the groundnut stew, I love, love, love. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I've oh, two minutes. Boom, boom. Oh. <laughs> I've recently just started cooking this summer by taking a class. What do you think is the best way to, like, start learning? Doing. Seriously, doing. So every day, at least once a week, commit to making one thing. And then if you can't make it, make notes and then and do it again. I, I think um, start with something simple like I was telling uh, Karen to do, um, like the green beans or the salmon, and just do the simple. Because I think that when people start to cook, especially those of you who grew up watching um, food TV, you want to make all of these fancy dishes. And my thing is, can you roast a chicken? Can you make some good eggs? And start simple with the techniques. So you're saying to start simple, then get more advanced. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I mean, because so often you're like, oh, I'm going to do a beef wellington with a this and a that and that. And it's so many techniques in that. And then it's just bad. Honestly, it's just bad. Uh, so yeah. you just so start something simple. I, I went to a restaurant. I ordered my eggs, scrambled soft, and I never got them right. They, five restaurants, they were not wow. right. And then I went to a restaurant. It was in uh, Monterey Bay. And I said to the lady, um, the owner, and I said, thank you for making my eggs so good. And she said, oh, actually, they're a little late because I saw them coming out. They weren't softly scrambled, and I made, remade them. I mean, can you, make the, can you make an egg? And people think that it's so easy, but they don't even know how to make the simple things. So I say, make, make the simple things so good, so well. Oh. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, last question. Hi. Hey. Um, my fiance um, was calling a school, and eventually he wants to open up his own bakery. Um, as a family member, it gets kind of intimidating when you want to cook. So it's more of a personal question. How is it when people want to say, oh, hey, come over for dinner, or your husband decides to cook, how do they respond to that? Because you obviously know what you're doing when the rest of us are kind of like, oh, we're trying to, you know, scramble some eggs. So um, how is right. that? <laughs> well, my husband cooks at home. I cook at the office. Oh, um, nice, and nice. And I, I can't say anything. I remember, and he tells this story often, when he made something, and it was so bad that I was like, that's not a winner. Oh, no. I never usually say anything. I don't <laughs> say anything. But that time, it was not a winner. But, um, but I want to encourage him to keep cooking. But I think that um, you, you just have to step in and do it. And, and, but he can't be in the kitchen. Like, I can't be in the kitchen with my husband because I, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. because he wants to do it his way. And I want him yes. to feel comfortable doing it with his way. And he doesn't want to see me looking at him, yep. you know, <laughs> doing it a different <laughs> way. So you need to just be in the kitchen and say, please, you know, I want to treat you. Then you have to go out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys, you were amazing. I'm sorry I didn't get to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been so incredible. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.